Chapter 20, Part 1, Electric Potential and Electric Potential Energy. So let's do a review first. We, uh, in Physics 1 or in uh, uh, Classical Physics 1, we had gravitational potential energy, okay, that we ensured with PE. And um, which is the energy associated with an object's height. So if, if you're holding an object in some sort of a height like H, then we can say that that object has some sort of an energy associated with it because it's been held at point that has a height of H. How do you know that it has energy? Because once you release it, it will just fall back to ground. It will go to the potential of zero. So here on the ground, the potential energy is zero. And at that point H, the potential is higher. And if you remember, potential was mgh, mass times the uh, acceleration due to gravity times the height will give you the potential energy of an object in, po uh, in height h. But this is what we had before, okay? And then we, uh, we also call it gravitational potential energy because this energy is due to, uh, purely due to gravity. And then so we, what we uh, ended up doing in, uh, in physics one was to consider work done by the gravitational force, okay? The gravitational force was mg, okay? Only coming from gravity, due to gravity. And if you remember, the work done was F dot D force times the dis displacement. They are both vectors, and this is the inner product of them. So that means that I have to multiply F, D, and the cosine of theta, which is the cosine of the angle between F and D, between force and displacement. And if you remember, the work done due to gravity from point A to point B is um, mg h of A minus h of B, okay? This is the, the displacement. It started from point A, goes to point B, so that's your displacement. And I wrote it like this, mg h of A minus mg h of B, okay? But then this is the potential or gravitational potential energy or U, okay, at point A. And this is U or gravitational potential energy at point B, okay? So when you're looking at this work done, if you want to move an object from point A to point B is equals to U of B, U of A, minus u of b. So in other words, you have negative delta u because we know that delta u is u of final minus u of initial, u of the final point, which is point b in our case, minus u of initial point, which is uh, point a. So work done is a negative of change in the gravitational potential energy. So, uh, and we also noted that the, gravi the gravity is, is a conservative force. Okay, if you remember, the gravity was a conservative force, meaning that its work does not depend on the path taken from point one to point two or from point A to point B. It does not matter. It only depends on the final position. So, in other words, if we have this point being our point A, and this point being our point B, it doesn't matter if you're going through this direction or if you're going through this direction to get from point A to point B, or if you're going in this direction, as long as your initial point and final point have the same height, okay, you are doing essentially the same amount of work going from point A to point B. Change of height is the same uh, in all of these different passes.
So we have the same concept. This is what we did in um, physics one. We have the same concept here in our chapter 20. So we have electric potential energy, electric potential energy. If you put a test charge in an electric field, it will feel a force, okay? It will feel a force. If you remember the force of two uh, opposite side uh, charge is attraction and two uh, similar, either two, two, uh, two positives or two negatives will be, uh, you know, repulsion. So they repel. A test charge placed in an electric field will feel some sort of a force Okay, so as you can see, I have put a Q0 here, a positive Q0, okay? And this positive Q, or test charge, which is always a positive, is feeling a force, and it's being uh, forced to go towards the negative plane, because positive and positive will repel, and positive and negative will attract. So this point charge here will feel a force, Okay. Now, if you remember, there was a relationship between force and field between F and E. Okay. And that was E is F over Q0. Okay. Or F over Q, which in our case is Q0, test charge. Um, and then we could write this as F is. E times Q0, okay? If you remember, um, for point charge, E was F over Q0, and that F was K Q Q zero R squared over Q zero. And then Q zero and Q zero cancel out. And you are left with K Q R squared. Okay. So once you release this charge from this point, it will go all the way down. For example, consider uh, these two positions, point A, the charge is located right here. You release the charge, it will feel a force, it will go towards point B right here, okay? So work done on a test charge by the electric field. Uh, imagine that there, we have an electric field here, um, all the way from positive to negative. That's our electric field, okay? So that's our E. The work done on a test charge by electric field uh, relies on the electric potential energy, delta U. It's the same concept as what we had. F of um, W of A to B from point A to B is U of A minus U of B, which is negative of delta U, okay? So this is exactly what we had before, which is right here. Work from A to B is negative delta U. Okay, now um, it, it has a unit of energy. Work has a unit of joules and joules are the units of energy. Okay, like the gravitational force, it is a conservative force. So the work done on uh, um, charges does not depend on the path, it depends on their final position. So it does not matter if you're releasing the charge and it's going in a weird shape, it won't, but it doesn't matter to get to point B or if it's going straight to get to point B, all right? Because you have a conservative force, just like gravity, so it does not matter where, which path it's taking to get to that point. Um, it only depends on the final and initial position. So it's feeling some sort of a force acting on it and that force is doing some work 
And if you consider the work done from point A to point B, that work done is negative delta U, okay, or negative UB minus UA. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at this example or question some sort. A proton and an electron, so we know that the proton is positive, the electron is negative, are in con, uh, constant electric field created by positively, oppositely charged plates. So we have a positive plate here. We have a negative plate here. So then we have an electric field inside. That's our electric field, okay? Uniform electric field. And we have a proton and an electron located in here. You release the proton from a positive side, so here is the proton. And you release the electron from a negative side. So that's our electron right there. Which feels a larger electric force? So what we know is that this proton is moving to the negative because positive and positive will repel. And this electron is going towards the positive because negative and negative will repel. But which one is feeling a greater force? So let's write down what the force was. The force was E times Q, okay? Do you remember what the E was? F over Q, remember this? So I'm just, I'm using this to write uh, the actual equation. Now there is a, a uniform electric field. Okay, so that means for both the electron and proton in our case, the E here is the same. So this guy is constant. So this is constant number, constant value. So if you have a different Q, you would have a different F. And by the way, these are all uh, vectors. F is a vector, uh, so E is a vector. So, uh, so your force essentially depends on the value for Q. If you have a higher Q, you have a higher force. If the E is constant. For proton, you have a positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative. 19 column and for electron you have negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 column they have the same charge so they will feel the same force but it will act on the different uh, uh, directions so the answer is number d or uh, option d here uh, let's take a look at this question. A proton and an electron are in a constant electric field like before created by oppositely charged plates. You release proton from the positive side and the electron from a negative side, which has a larger acceleration. So uh, if you remember from our um, physics one, um, sigma f equals ma, Okay, and sigma f is all the forces. Remember that we show sigma f, we sometimes use f of net, or we sometimes use f of external, they're all the same. So sigma f, all the forces acting on that object, on these objects are, is equal to m times acceleration, and the force is electric field in this case, okay, which is eq, equals ma. So if I want to find a, I am writing it as if I have eq over m. E is the same for both electron and proton. They are in a uniform field. Q is the same, one positive, the other one negative, but the value for those is, are the same. And so the value or the amount of acceleration is purely depend on the value for m. If you have a high M, then you have a low acceleration. So M of proton is way bigger than M of electron. It means that the acceleration of proton 
is thus way less than acceleration of electron because of the mass. So uh, the, the question is, which has a larger acceleration? And it is the electron. Right there. Work in electric potential energy. So the electric force is conservative, we know that. That means the work done by this force does not depend on its uh, path, but it depends on how it gets to that point. From It depends on the final position and initial position. It does not matter which path you're taking to get to that point. Therefore, there must be a potential energy associated with it. So if you have a force and then a displace, displacement, you can find the work done by that force by just simply making a dot product of the force with the displacement, and that will give you the, the work done. So in our case, you have a force, which is um, a, a uh, electric force here. And you know what the value for that is. So we know that F is EQ. Okay. So we have uh, EQ here. And by the way, here we are putting a test charge inside the field. Um, so we can just use Q0. It doesn't really matter, it's just the notation. Um, the concept wouldn't change. And then you are multiplying this by D, which is the displacement, okay? If these two are, are considered to, to um, be written for an electron, so for the electron, what's happening is that you have a positive plate here and then a negative plate here. And there is a uniform electric field inside, which I show it with E as usual. But then this electron here at this point, um, is moving in this direction, okay? Is moving in this direction. But the electric field is in the opposite direction. Because when you are when you are considering this this dot product, what this dot product is really is is uh, e the value for e the value for q and the value for displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. Cosine of the angle between them. So what you have here is the angle between e and displacement which is in this direction or f okay that would be cosine of 180 and uh, the cosine of 180 is negative one okay if your q is negative you have an electron then negative and negative will be multiplied and you will have a positive work okay if you have this is for uh, electron if you have a proton so let's let's indicate that this is an electron if you have a proton, you have positive, positive on one side, negative on the other. Okay, if you have a proton, then this proton is positive charge. So that's the direction of E, and that is the direction of the force or displacement, okay? because the positive will go towards the negative plate. So uh, they will have the same um, direction. So the angle here is cosine of zero. The cosine of zero is one, and you are left again with E, Q, D. Positive, positive. Q is positive because it's proton. Uh, cosine is positive because it's cosine of zero, which is one. In the case of electron, you have a cosine of 180, which is negative one, and the Q is also negative. So in the case of electron, you have a cosine of 180, which is negative one, and your Q zero is electron, which is negative, okay? Q 
is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And in case of proton, you have a cosine of hundred, uh, cosine of zero, which is plus one. And Q is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So which means that you're always left with the same formula. If you keep uh, if you keep the value there. Now, if, if I have a negative here, this would, um, this would fix the problem for us because now what all you need to do is to just put a value for Q0 here, right? So that is the formula that we are going to use. Now we know the work done is negative delta u. Always, both for the gravitational potential energy and for electric uh, forces, the work done is negative delta u. Or u of a minus u of b. Or u of initial position minus u of initial position minus u of final position. So electric potential differences uh, or difference. The electric potential energy per unit charge, okay, we show it with V and it also known as electric potential or just potential or voltage. We also know it as voltage. The unit for that is joule per column and we show it with this formula. So V is U over Q0, okay? So remember, the, this is the uh, electric potential difference or um, electric potential energy per unit area, uh, sorry, per unit uh, charge not area, charge. One more time, the electric potential energy, which is U per unit charge, will give you the voltage, okay? So remember, neither U nor V can be found in an absolute sense. There are always the differences from one point to the other, from point A to point B. We can only define differences between the values at two different points because of the work that it's doing on a charged particle. Okay, so if I have delta V, which is V of B minus V of A, and I can write V of B as U of B over Q zero, based on this formula that I have right here, and V of A is U of A over Q zero, and I know U of B minus U of A is just negative delta, uh, negative W or negative work done from A to B, Okay, and uh, this is essentially delta U over Q0. So in other words, V is U over Q0. Delta V, change of the V since Q is zero is change of the U over Q0. So this Q0 is constant. There is, has a value associated with it, either proton or electron. But uh, I can write delta V as delta U over Q. So the change of the uh, voltage is the change of the potential energy, electric potential energy, okay? So if you have a voltage, 12 volts, okay? 120, 110, 220, whatever that the voltage difference is from one side to the other, from one point to another, from point positive to point negative, from point A to point B, that is equal to delta U, the change or the difference in the, in the uh, electric potential energy over Q0 per unit charge. This is the test charge per unit charge. And the, the um, units for that is also very important. The unit for electric potential energy is joule. 
and the Q is just column, okay? Uh, so you have J over C for the units of V or voltage. Electric potential energy in terms of electric potential, um, electric potential in terms of electric potential energy. So V in terms of U somehow. So we know that delta V is delta U over Q zero. Okay, and then we just had it right here. Delta V is delta U over Q zero right here. All right, and we know that this delta U is just negative W because uh, if you remember, W of point A to B was um, U of A minus U of B, and that was negative delta U, okay? And as I said, the units for that is J. The units for this Q is C. So you have J over C or joule per uh, unit charge or joule per column. And then so if we play with this a little bit, I have V being W over Q0. Okay, Q0. And I want to get rid of this negative because I want to talk about the value and I don't want to talk about the sign. So let's, let's consider the values for the magnitudes for those, okay? This means that voltage is work done over a test charge or per unit charge, okay? Now, if you write this, in a different way, you will have W being V times Q. In other words, energy is voltage times uh, charge, okay? That's why a lot of times instead of energy in this field or in electricity, we use electron volt, okay? So we have use electron volt To show the energy. So electron volt is a unit of energy. Electron is Q, the units of charge, okay, and volt is this uh, V here. So every time that you see electron volt, you're talking about the unit of units of energy. So in, in our case, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 column, okay, C, which is the charge of electron times one voltage or one voltage difference. This is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joule of energy, okay? So every time that you see one electron volt or electron volt in general, you're talking about energy. So this is, energy. So electric question number three, um, electric potential energy and kinetic energy. A proton and an electron are in a constant electric field created by oppositely charged plates. Okay, and it's the same concept of previous uh, two questions. You release the proton from positive side and electron from negative side. When it is strike the opposite plate, which one has more kinetic energy? So let's take a look. Um, what was the formula for, what was the work energy formula from our previous class or from uh, our physics one? Sigma W is delta K, okay? Sigma W is K of final minus K of initial. In our case, we're, we're releasing them, okay, from rest. So they don't have any initial kinetic energy associated with them. So this guy is zero. So sigma W is K of final. So, um, and this is what we're looking for, K of final, because the question is asking when it, when it, it is strikes the opposite plate, which one has more kinetic energy? Which one has more final kinetic energy? Okay, 
So in other words, I need to, to find the work done to see which one is bigger. And what was the work done? The work done was negative delta u, okay? If you remember, which is u of point um, A minus u of point B. Point A is the starting point, point B is the final point. Or I can write it actually like that, u of the initial point minus u of the final point. Okay, and that work done in the uh, potential in, a, uh, in the electric field had a formula here. Remember this? Negative Q zero ED, okay? Negative Q zero ED was our formula. So if I come down here, I can easily write it down. Negative Q zero E D. Now, um, this Q zero is obviously in our case for this problem is not a test charge anymore. It's either electron or proton. Okay, now, but they would, uh, they would have the same value, they would have the same magnitude associated with them, either plus 1.6, 10 to the negative 19, or um, negative 1.6, 10 to the negative 19. E is electric field, which is constant, and D is the displacement from one plate to the other, which means that all of these values that are important to find the work are constant in our case, either for proton or electron. So the final kinetic energy of both would be the same. Okay, so both acquire the same kinetic energy. They both acquire the same kinetic energy, but with opposite signs. Because one direction would be negative, the other direction would be positive. And the reason for that is this Q is either positive or negative for electron or proton. So gravitational versus electric potential difference. The speed of the, of the basketball increases as it goes from point A to B. So if you're letting the object fall down from point A to B, it's falling from this point with height H of A to this point to the height H of B. And it's due to gravitational force of Mg, all right? But as it's going down, it gains speeds, losing its potential energy, gaining kinetic energy, okay? Similar, similarly, Q0, which is the test charge, accelerate when it goes from point A to B. So a test charge here, Q0, or a positive charge, once it's re being released from this point, going all the way to point B, from point A to point B, it is gaining um, acceleration, okay? It is accelerating, it's gaining its speed as it's going from this point to this point. A positive charge accelerates from a, from a region of higher potential to a region to the lower potential energy. So a positive is higher potential energy, negative is lower potential energy. Once you release a positive charge, it'll go from higher potential energy to a lower potential energy. Okay, a negative charge, if you release a negative charge, it will go to the higher potential energy from a lower potential energy. Okay, so a positive test charge at A accelerates, at A, a positive test charge accelerates, towards B and continues to accelerate towards C, okay? So neg uh, lower potential is negative, higher potential is positive, okay? If I have a positive test charge here, it will go to a lower potential because positive and positive are repelling, and positive and negative are attracting, Okay, 
So we, we know that this is happening. Now, what will a negative test charge do if placed at B? If, if you place it at B, what would happen? A negative charge. So if I have a negative charge here, then it will go towards B. So it'll go from a lower or midpoint uh, of the potential energy to a higher potential energy. Okay, if it was placed in point C, then it will go from even a lower uh, potential to a higher potential energy. Okay, just like what we had here. Let's, let's look at an example, headlight and a car battery. Um, so in, in, in here, side A has a potential of 12 volts, while B has a potential of zero. Positive charges are repelling one another. So from point A towards point B, you will have a current. Okay, kind of like that. As the charge passes through the headlight, their potential energy is converted to heat. And uh, photons of light, okay? So that's why you can see that these photons are coming out in all directions. Photons of light. This is light. Once it reached point B, the battery used its chemical energy to recharge them and send them back to A. And so that's why you are charging a battery or you know you have the, your battery in your in your car. Uh, on a side note, I don't want to confuse you, but on a side note, a question for you. Do we know that the protons are, because when we are saying that this is positive, it means that there is a lack of electron, or there are mostly protons here. But we know that the protons are fixed. We know that the protons don't, don't move. We know that the protons are atoms, and atoms are fixed inside either a liquid, or a, a solid body, okay? How do I have these protons moving from one side to the other? Now, uh, it, it, they don't. We know, in fact, what's happening is that these there are electrons coming out. So the actual current has an opposite direction. The actual current is from negative all the way to positive. Back in the days, when they started to discover these stuff, they didn't know that. They thought that the protons are moving. So they thought that the positive is moving up all the way to negative, okay? But in reality, we know that the negative is going. We know that the electrons are, are free, to, free to leave. The, the, the electrons are freely going all the way to this uh, direction. But because we want to respect what they thought, uh, we're gonna keep, uh, even though it's wrong. We're gonna uh, we're gonna keep um, their original thought, and it turned out it doesn't really matter. We're talking about the difference from po point A to point B. We're talking about the difference of a potential of point A to B. And if you're talking about the difference, it doesn't really matter what direction you're choosing. So um, the science part of it wouldn't would would be unaffected. Potential gradient. So uh, the electric field is related to how fast the potential is changing, okay? So um, it, you have a, a constant electric field or a uniform electric field inside a parallel plate like a capacitor, but, um, but E will change with uh, distance. So if you're going away, so do you remember what E was for a point charge? It was K Q over R squared. So if you have a point charge here, okay, you can find what the value for E is at this point using this formula. A e is kq over r squared. Okay, now 
if you if you go away from this point charge so if if r is going up then your e is uh, decreasing okay because you are you have something in the denominator which is uh, high so your e is uh, is getting low so that means if you're going away from a charge the uh, the field will decrease now it's essentially the same thing here so we define the potential gradient as e of negative delta v over delta s as a unit of volt per meter as you're going away the electric potential will drop. Volts and electron volts. And as we talked about it before, I just want to go over it one more time. Volts are used in connection with batteries. Okay. Electron volts are the energy associated with the uh, with the atom particles. And if you remember, I said the electron volts or the work. Um, V was um, U over Q0, okay? And delta V was delta U over Q0. And delta V was negative W because delta U is negative W over Q0. And I said that the W the value for W is Q0 times delta V. Q0 is electron or charge, and delta V is just a change in the voltage, volt. So electron volt should be joule or energy, okay? And we had that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Uh, now, let's, go here uh, remember the energy conservation that the total energy in point a uh, is equal to the total energy in point b if you have a if you don't have a non-conservative forces like friction so what if you remember from uh, our previous semester friction is a non-conservative force for example okay and which means it does matter which direction or which path you are taking to get to another point, okay? But if you do not have a, a, a non-conservative force, uh, then it doesn't matter, and your energy will be conserved. So if, if you have a conservation of energy, energy at point A, which is uh, kinetic plus potential, should be equal to energy at point B, which is kinetic plus potential, okay? And for the electric force, okay, for the electric force, if you remember, we had V being equal to U over Q. And so U is QV. So I have uh, kinetic at point B is equal to kinetic at point A plus UFA minus UFB because I could just easily move this guy to the other side. Okay. And UFA minus UFB. I can write it like this, Q VFA minus VFB. You just factor out the Q, all right? And now we have another term to add to our total energy of the system. Remember before, the total um, energy of the system is kinetic, which is either translational or rotational, translational half mv squared, rotational half i omega squared, potent gravitational potential energy, mgh, elastic potential energy, or the energy that is due to some sort of things like spring, half kx squared, x is the amount of displacement from the equilibrium point, k is the uh, spring constant. And now you have delta u here, that you can add another term to the potential energy if you have electric force or if you have electric field in your problems or in your equations. Electric potential and electric potential energy. So since the force 
on a negative charge is positive, is opposite to the field uh, direction. So you have a field direction like that. And the, the, the force on a negative charge, that's a negative charge. The force on a negative charge is in the opposite direction of the field, and that's the field right here, okay? Uh, positive charge accelerate in the direction of decreasing electric potential, we know that, and the negative charge accelerate in the direction of increasing electric potential. We talked about it before, it's right here, we've talked about it. Higher potential energy, lower potential energy, we talked about this. And in both cases, the charge moved to a region of lower potential energy. Potential energy of a point charge, okay? Recall work is force times distance. We know that force times displacement is work, all right? So a, uh, if we want to find the work, all we need to do is to have an equation like this. So we know that the work from A to B is negative delta U, which is negative U of B minus U of A, which is in fact U of A minus U of B. U, on the other hand, is V over um, other way around. V is U over Q, okay? And thus U is VQ zero. Okay, V of point charge is KQ over R. So this means that U is k q q zero over r okay and that that means that i can write w being u of a minus u of b so k q q zero r of a minus k q Q zero R of B and which is right here. How did we know this? You need to know, uh, I don't want to do it here, but you can definitely do that. And it's also written in your book that the um, V or the voltage of uh, the, or the potential of the point charge at some point R is KQ over R. So uh, if you have a point charge, Q, and if you want to find the potential energy here, or the V or the voltage here, the potential that it causes at this point, at point, uh, uh, this point away from it, uh, look at an R. And the V for point charge is K, Q over R. So potential difference. Um, uh, remember that we had this, and uh, the this is what what we were talking about. So this Q and this Q zero will cancel out here, and you end up with this value. So uh, the, for the point charge V is Q, kq over R, but Again, this is the way that the book has, has find this. There are other ways to find the, the potential um, difference for the point charge. Now, the way that the book found it is this.
you had a, a V being equal to U over Q, okay, or the voltage is the potential energy per unit of charge. So delta V is delta U over Q zero. I talked about it a couple of slides back. Now V of B, V of point B minus V of point A is negative, uh, V of point B minus V of point A is delta U over Q zero, okay? And delta U is negative work. So you have KQ, Q zero, uh, over Q zero, over R of A, minus KQ, Q zero, over Q zero, over R of B, and then these will cancel out you're left with, with KQ R of A, KQ R of B. If you choose your point B to be at infinity, at infinity, okay, potential is zero, all right? So if you choose R to be infinity, you are left with, um, a very huge number in the denominator here. So that means this KQ over R of B. So if you have a very large number in the denominator, this whole thing is zero. Okay, so this is zero because R of B is going to infinity. So this is zero, all right? And then the potential at infinity is also zero. So this is also zero. So the value for A, the value or the magnitude is KQ over R. If, you're, if you want to see how it's reacting with R, if R is increasing, if R is going up, then your potential or your voltage or your potential is decreasing by R. If you're getting really far away from a point charge, your voltage will drop, okay? And that's how they are reacting, either for a positive charge or a negative charge. We have another rule, the electric potential for multiple point charges. If you want to, if you have a electric potential of the group of point charges, uh, if you want to find the sum of them or, you know, the, the total of them, you can just add them up. It's just an algebraic sum of the potential of each charge being added up. At this point, at point zero, the potential V is KQ over R, right? So if if at point zero, if you're getting very close to this charge, your R is going to zero. So your V should go to infinity. So at zero, as R goes to zero, your potential should go to infinity because your denominator is getting very, very small. So you have a number divided by zero to be your voltage. And that is infinity. So that's why it's going all the way up. You don't know where it's going to, to go. It's, it will go to infinity. It will be the same thing for this guy. If you get very close to this guy, okay, you have another number divided by zero again because you are very close to this point charge. So your value for V should go uh, to infinity, but this one goes to negative infinity because in this point you have a negative number over zero, which is negative infinity, because the charge is negative there. So let's do a little bit of summary um, of our part one, uh, chapter 20, part one. A charged particle create an electric field E. Uh, for a point charge, that E is KQ over R square, and it's along the R direction. So if you have a Q here, uh, 
at, at this point, point R, the electric field is K Q over R squared, and it's along the R, along the uh, direction of the R. So that's why you have an R hat here, okay? And if you place the charge in the field, you will experience a force, and that force is EQ. Remember that E is a vector, force is a vector. Uh, since E is in the, along the R hat direction, meaning that it's along the distance, okay, uh, either uh, attraction or repel, uh, either it, it, they attract or they repel, but either way, it's along the R. It's not perpendicular to it. It's not with an angle of 90 degrees or 30 degrees. It's always with an angle that's making either zero or 180. It's always along the R direction. And work is done by the electric force to move Q0 from higher potential to a lower potential. For example, from positive to negative. The electric potential energy per unit charge, assuming the potential is zero at infinity, is V is Q K over R. Okay. One more time. Work is done by the electric force to move Q0 from positive to negative, okay, from higher potential to lower potential, okay. The electric potential energy per unit charge, V was U over Q, the electric potential energy per unit charge electric potential energy u per unit charge which is v or voltage okay for a point charge is kq over r and this has to do with the work done on that the work done on that by that field this work done is related to the potential energy and if you write it like that you will end up with this uh, equation k Q over R for a point charge. Okay, it has to do something with that the voltage or the um, potential energy at infinity is zero. Okay, so this is the end of part one of chapter 20. It got a little bit long, but um, I think it's important to, uh, to understand the basis for this uh, chapter. We'll continue with part two right after this.